Hello and welcome. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, check out these courses and enjoy this clownversation. <gasps> Hello, welcome everybody to another clownversation. I am Barnaby, um, founder of Clown Spirit, which uses the power of clowning to bring lightness, joy, and connection to your life and the lives of everybody around you. That is my mission in the world. Great to see you here today. If you're new to the Clown Spirit universe, channel, all this online stuff, please, uh, if you would do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, I would be very, very grateful. It's about building community and building support. And the more support I get from you, the more I can do of these kinds of free events for other people. So if you haven't hit subscribe on the YouTube channel, do that. And before I bring on my amazing guest this week, who is the internationally renowned clown, Gadi Hutter, I would like to very quickly mention to you that I have a workshop coming up in a few weeks. It's a weekend workshop specifically for beginners. It's an online workshop. So wherever you are in the world, you can do it. It's on the 5th and 6th of March just three hours each day. So it's a six hour workshop specifically designed for people kind of just starting out on their clown journey. And we'll get really clear on the fundamentals of clowning, really what it's all about, because a lot of people have, don't necessarily have the right idea of what clowning is. So we get to the bottom of that and we really put it in our bodies and do exercises, games to understand how it feels to be in the clown state and what it means to open up to the emotional qualities that are necessary to be in clown. So it's called Awaken Your Clown Spirit, 5th and 6th of March. You can just go to my website, which is www.clown-spirit.com and you can click on courses there and you will go straight to a page with all the courses and you'll find Awaken Your Clown Spirit there. There are a few places left on the course. So if you're new to clowning or if you're an old hand and you just want to kind of refresher, and you want to go back to the fundamentals, then come along and take that course. It'll be a lot of fun. All right. Hello, everybody. If you're there listening, watching, please say hi in the comments. Hi, Brian. This is looking forward to this. Me too. John Sayre. Hi. Marlies. Hi, Marlies. Great to see you. And yeah, jump on the comments. Say hi. Let me know where you are. Let me know what questions you'd like me to ask the amazing Gadi Hutter. Um, I first came across Gadi years ago when I was organizing the Clown Encuentro as a kind of curating that festival in Colombia. And we invited her thinking, oh, she'll never come to Bogota to do this little Clown Encuentro. And she came and it was absolutely incredible, except that <laughs> I couldn't be there because my daughter was just about to be born and obviously I couldn't leave uh, my wife at that time. So I didn't come to the Clan Encuentro. I never met Gadi. I never got to see her show in Bogota, even though she came and did it. And so I'm so, so pleased that this time around I get the opportunity to meet her. She is um, really a legend in the, in the clowning world. She um, has conquered the stages of the world and she's performed, you know, everywhere at the highest possible possible level since about 1981. Um, she has won at least five international prizes for her work, probably a lot more. She's written three best-selling children's books. She teaches clowning at two prestigious clown schools in Switzerland and Germany. And she has made a number of incredible shows. Um, a couple of them are on, available online on YouTube. So you can go to YouTube and you can see um, the souffleurs, for example, which means uh, the prompter. It's an extraordinary show. I think her latest show isn't available online yet. So you're going to have to go and see that one. And we're going to ask Gadi all about that. So without any more ado, I would like to welcome onto this virtual stage Gadi herself. Hello, Gadi. Hello. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hello. Good evening, right? It's like evening time for you over there in Germany. Yes, it's six o'clock in the evening. It's night is coming soon. Yeah, very good. I just want to say before we start, thank you so much for, for coming on and doing this with us. It means so much 
to me and to our community to have you here. There's been a huge amount of excitement um, leading up to this, people responding on Facebook, so excited to, to get to kind of not talk to you, but to, you know, hear you talk about clowning. So thank you so much. Thank you for your interest. I, ca I cannot see who is listening. No, um, there are, you know, there are people commenting. So from time to time, I will read out their comments. So if, if guys, if you have any questions at any point, um, Mayan, I see, has just jumped on. I'm Mayan. Um, some of these people, I expect, know you, Gadi, already, and some are completely new to you. So maybe for the people who don't know um, about you, Gadi, and what it is you do, do you think you could just give us a little kind of introduction to you, to what what is it that you feel drives you as an artist in clowning? Why do you do it? But I think the clown is a player. He plays with everything. He plays with life, with death, with, with all human tragic world. And he, he is uh, out of moral. He is a pre-moralistic person. He's, like a, he's cruel like a child. He's not childish, but he is, uh, he's not, even not arrived in, in, the, in the moral uh, laws. Well. So he's really, uh, but, but, but when, when I say he's like a child, it's dangerous because it's, he's not sweet. He's not um, stupid. He's very clever, very cruel, but also very tender and very touching. So... I think it's it's a archaic figure. It's a very uh, universal mass because every every where around the world there are clownish masks or buffon mask or, or this grotesque exaggerated mask. They they make laugh the people. Mm. Yeah. It's it's amazing how what a what a universal character it is, right? And yet, so many in so many cultures now, it seems to have become, um, I don't know, kind of sh there's some kind of shame attached to to clowning, some kind of like embarrassment or something. I don't know if it's is it like that in Germany or is that more of a British and maybe American thing as well? This kind of oh clown, we don't want to, you know, it's not it's not serious and it's not important yeah but it's very uh, old story to to mépriser uh, uh, um, uh, ah, just a moment verachten uh, verachten just a moment verachten, to despise disdain ah. the, the clown that is uh, the, the beginning of uh, I, I think that the the, the or this uh, uh, I have, yeah, it's uh, the newest uh, scientific book about the story of, of clowns, of buffons, of all these masks. Yeah. And uh, they, uh, this, what is the word? Disdain. 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 <laughs> the clown. Yeah. It's a big tradition. The, but the, the clown play or the comedia play or the uh, comedia dell'arte or buffon or jester is that is uh, the original play of theater and it comes out of of the celebration of the festivity of uh, solstitio um, uh, of all these big archaic festivities and uh, to uh, this this mask came out of, of of this and it becomes more and more professional <laughs> that uh, and when in, in, in the uh, fifth, fifth uh, thousand, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred, when the modern uh, kind of theater comes out, and yeah. they, um, it was the, the church and, and the, 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 the power to really forbidden all these clown and arlequinos and buffons because there were the mythical uh, old style, uh, not Christian, uh, profane, vulgar, and funny, yeah. and uh, they uh, it, uh, become excluded 
in this moment. And just for for the for the the thing that also in this moment in uh, thousand five hundred six and came out the science of theater. They declared the theater that we have we 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 know today a theater as theater, but mm -hmm. the the um, the comic or the, the clown theater is the original that that, that is the actor invent his mask, invent his story and make with it. And the modern one is there is an author, they write the theater, and then there's a director, they think how to, then yeah. the director just performing. But- uh, um, Show us show us the, um, the image on the spine of the book that you showed me before. Can you sh hold it nice and close to the camera? The spine, the, the image yeah. of you down at the bottom. Yeah. And then here is my, yeah. Oh, Never okay. that. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, there we go. Can everybody see that? That is, that is, it's unmistakable, Gardi, right? And yet it's just, oh, it's got the little red nose, which is cute. But yeah. without the red nose, just the silhouette, you instantly recognize who this is, right? And so it is mask work in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. Down is mask work. It's about these kind of archetypal images that project and communicate in a very simple way. And, you know, it, for example, in very busy, big, loud, noisy spaces where things have to have to communicate, right? That's the origin of popular theater. It's not in a quiet. Perhaps I have to explain why it's here because they uh, these these are eight scientific of theater, two professors, and uh, and they write about the origin in England, in Russia, in France, in Italy, in Germany, and they make reference to today. And to my mask because they say that it's the same way of playing of of uh, being of this this physical grotesque mask uh, they uh, and the characteristic is they always know that they're playing it's not like the actor in the theater that make they fake they are there or not so the, mm -hmm. the clown is always playing with the play he he, he yeah. plays with the theater and so, uh, for me, it's a big pleasure that that uh, I, I feel that I have a long, long uh, story before me, and yeah. I go on to re and probably every so every uh, time has to reinvent the clown. And in yeah. this moment, it's it's really not fashion. Also in Europe, the clown is uh, all the theater is not spoken is not fashion in this moment. There's no. There's one mask theater in Germany. There are for say, two, three clowns, and but I think one one reason is also because we are not easy for the television. Mm. Because if you have a comedian, you put a camera and you take the face, he yeah. speaks, you have yeah. it. Clown is slowly, it's it's uh, imag there are imagings. It, it's not uh, television like. No, but interestingly, on the other hand, um, you know, clowns have traditionally had to communicate and, and make their work in very, very tight spaces, right? Small spaces of time. Like you have one minute, go. You have three minutes, go. You have to do. And this, yeah. is, the, this is the same format as, um, you know, TikTok and YouTube and, and Facebook. All these things are like tiny sound bites. You have to kind of do something in one minute to, to be successful, to be interesting. So it seems to me that clowns have this potential to to get to go into that space and, and be quite successful, which I think is a, I put that out as a challenge for people, you know, use, use the media that we have out there. Let's adapt. Yeah. No, I think that this is the format for, for stand-up comedy. Yeah. But I, I think um, I, I'm not hopeless. I think all these uh, social media and all this being present and being uh, uh, make this this perfect picture of life. Uh, mm. The people also need to go deeper and to go out of this. And so we are there. We're just there. <laughs> We're there for that. Um, I, I really, what you just said about theater made me think about Die Souffleurs, this show, which is available on YouTube. So 
folks, you can go and see the whole show. I mean, it's it's something totally different watching it on camera, of course, but it's still possible to see an extraordinary um, creative output in that work. And I wonder, could you talk a little bit about the the theme? Because the show, just to just so I can give people the context, it's based in a theater. Well, you think it's a theater. It's set up where you you appear, your character appears through a little um, hole and just the head. And it's clear very quickly that you're a prompter, that you're working and you're facing the actors on the, the front of the stage, helping them to remember their lines and you're doing sound effects. So you never get to see the audience because the audience is sort of behind you and you're facing the action. But the actual audience can see you doing all these actions and words. So we kind of are trying to guess what's going on in the in in the uh, this show. And then Gadi comes in her character, Hannah, uh, she comes down below this stage and she's in a, a world where she lives. And it's like a little room underneath the stage of this theater. And all the action goes on. And slowly we kind of get to know about her character, her past, her loves, her, you know, her passions, just day-to-day -day life. And this beautiful story kind of emerges with all these incredible um, objects. But what interested me was this, was the symbolism and the theme of uh, stage and performing and who are we performing to? And is it, is it a real performance? Is, are there really actors there or is it all in her imagination? Could you just tell us, like, what for you? What what is that show really about? Uh, the, the the drama is that they closed the theater for opening a new theater, and they forgot the prompter. Ah, okay. In the underground, that is the big drama, no? And uh, see, uh, I think the the clown are always uh, humans in the shadow. They're not the heroes, not the happy people. They are the, the lost people. The, uh, and, and this prompter, she lives under the stage and uh, till here she, she has to change for working and, and then she's in pyjama. And she, but she's not unhappy, she's not sad. She lives there with her little things, with uh, the ashes of her husband. <laughs> and. Um, but then this drama, uh, they closed the theater and they, she couldn't go out because she's too fat to go out to the hall. Uh, so she had really to change. And at the end, she goes, she arrives to go out. Yeah. And I, I can say of, I, I created nine, nine shows and the prompt is the only one I'm not dead at the end. Oh, interesting. Yes. But you, you did try to kill yourself a few times in it. <laughs> no, another the reason was I no, the the first idea was I come out and then there is a big light falling on the head and that is <laughs> not my normal death. But it, it's it's clown death. It's it's like Billy Coyote. It's I die and then I stand up. And but then was this this she worked so hardly to come out of of this underground of this shadow world to come out and then. For us, it was really too cruel to uh, yeah. to sketch her, to, to smash her. But in yeah. all the other shows, I'm I'm dead at the end. Mm. And uh, I think uh, the clown is the is really uh, about the um, failing. And the biggest fail we have in our life is that. And I'm convinced also you not know, that this historically true that uh, the the invention of of laughing and of a, a comic masks is in front of that that humanity invented this long 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 time ago that is uh, because we cannot we cannot win we cannot uh, come over we will we can do what we want but we die at the end and this this is the big failing this is the basic failing and so uh, i think the original of all these this uh, mask of uh, Harlequino uh, 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 is a death god. So Harlequino, for example, is uh, the 
the name is from Helekin. Helekin is a Celtic god of death. Yeah. And hell means not our hell, our Christian hell where the, the sinners go, but hell is a place under the earth where the dead people go. And Helekin is, is a, he's also the, the leader of the wild army. I don't know if you know these legends. We have a lot of this. One day in, in, in the year, the earth is opening and then the wild army, all these uh, monsters and horrible stuff. Halloween is very similar. Carnival is very similar. That is uh, in, in the winter solstices, the earth is open and the deaths come and, and uh, afraid the, the living people and then they go away. And this, this is the origin of, 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 uh, of our masks that we, we laugh about horror. We, yeah. we, we laugh about tragedy. So, and, and you're really only funny if you're very tragic. So you must, if, if I invent a new story, I, I search really the biggest tragedy possible. And then I turn it to comic. I mean, it, it is such a beautiful idea of this... Um... The, the the not only the character in the souffleurs being the the one that never gets seen by the audience the one that gets forgotten about the lowest status but that she also lives under the stage so it's a bit like that idea of you know the hell under where, where all the the dead people go she's already sort of dead she's underneath the stage living this kind of secret life yeah yeah it's just stunning yeah. there's some very amazing technical moments in that show i thought like just the use of props and the way everything's set up is extraordinary the bed the bed is like another character yeah yeah and but, but, but this is the thing when i'm alone on stage i don't speak i i need uh play things yeah i need toys i need yeah. something where i can uh, fight a against Huh. And do you, so in your process, do you create this playground and, and then discover the the action or do you know all the action and then you say, oh, I need this, 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 and please make these things for me? Parallel. So I, I don't, I, before I, I begin a, a new show, I'm thinking, speaking, writing, thinking, speaking, writing. Just in this day, I'm, I'm preparing for, for the next new show. I'm here with a, a co-writer. I need somebody to to think loud because yeah. if I'm too alone, I'm, I'm think around. And if I have to explain to somebody, I would like to do this and this, and then the person says, what? I don't understand. And then, ah. So, uh, and when I have more or less, uh, a, a, it's a mechanism. Mm. It's a, a, a I have a drama, I have a situation, a drama, and I have a possible solution. Mm. Then I go to the, my director. I ask him if he like, if you, and if he like, he will do the direction. <laughs> and then also only I, I really go to improvise. improvise uh, but I have to know what, where, what is the situation, what she wants, what is her dream, what is her fear, uh, where she would like to arrive. Yeah. And then we, we try for one month, we, we try and try to construct a theater story, not no more a, a written story on, on the paper, but a, a play, a played story. It's different, no? Mm. It, uh, and when we have more or less this, then I go and search somebody who makes me this bed I need. Yeah. <laughs> or who makes me, uh, I say, I, I need a, a, a couple. Uh, what, what is that uh, thing what, what the prompter is coming out? This. Uh, I don't know what you call it. Like It's like a little shell, like a okay. little That's, roof. Mm. Yes, and I say, I, a little roof. And the same to him, I need... The stars. I won't see the stars because this is the universe from her, and this is the sky. Then uh, I, 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 
I I'm thought I have the lucky to find these persons who are able to do this. Uh, yeah, the bed is, is that have, for just for finishing. When we have all this, then we make rehearsals. Then we really make theater. We have two months to to invent the show with the things, with this kitchen, with turning the how she makes the coffee, how she makes the egg, and and we find all the the gags. But this is really day by day, big work. Yeah, that's a really great out outline of the of your process. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to ask you a secret. How does the bed work? Because it pops up at just the right moment. Is it controlled by somebody else, or do you have a control of it? Because it's it's incredible. It's like it it, it pops up from one end, and then the other mm -hmm. end can pop up. The bed. The bed. No, no. I I make it. I have uh, with my hand. With my right hand. That is uh, is magnet magnet magnet. You know. Yeah. Is English magnet? Yes. Okay, and there are magnet. And when I, I I took the magnet stops, so it comes up. Right, but right, right. The, the, the position, the normal position is up, and then I I push it down, and with the magnet it takes it fix. And then I I make yeah. off the magnet and pump. No, no, that is that is really big uh, uh, technical work. How to do it and it ah. works so well and there's a whole sequence where you're trying to go to sleep and the bed pops up and uh, one way and you put it back and then it pops up the other way and you put it back and then both of them pop up and you're kind of squeezed between the, it's a beautiful yeah, yeah. cartoon yeah. kind of image and then later um it's the bed is beautifully reincorporated because you you can't as you said you can't fit through the hole so you have to lose weight and yeah. you, you end up being using the bed as an exercise machine to get thin yeah. in yeah. all these different ways. And it's just so good. I just love that. Mm. So nice. You. So you have to see the other shows because every show has very, I love these things. I love uh, in, in the, um, the Taylor, the last solo show, I have a big mirror. And when I die, I, I've, so I, I have a big ink accident i mm. fall down and, and have a, scissors, a big scissors in the head yeah but i don't uh, I, 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 and then i fall down just in front of the mirror and in the mirror my soul goes up and then i wake up and say no 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 stay here i don't want i don't want to leave and so uh i i play with 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 my soul who is in the mirror and i'm there and that is really but I think that is the most sophisticated. Mm. Yeah. And this, the idea was born because in, in Switzerland, there are farmer houses where in the, in the sleeping room, they have a little on, on, on the, uh, how do you say, up, um, on the roof, of, of in, the, in the room, yeah. in the, there's a little hole. And when somebody dies, they open this hole so the soul can fly out. Okay. This is a very old legend. This was the idea to this that my soul won't won't go because for the soul it's to die. It's happy. She's she's light. She's free. She can fly. But yeah. the body says no, 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 no. I, I I stay here. Just just. Yeah. And so this was technically the that was really hard. But now it's it's magic. Yeah, there's always magic in clowning. I love that. So uh, there's a question here, which I think is a really nice question from Marlies. She says, um, I'm going to put it on the screen here. How was your way to clown, especially as a woman? Did you have a female role model? No, when I created my, my clown 41 years ago, and there was no female. Um, these are, my, my role model was Chaplin and Keaton. Mm. And uh, but I was uh, in I was grown up, grown up in 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 the very old society, and when I was fifteen years old, it was sixty eight. So it was just the right moment for me to to right. uh, be a rebellion. And the the fact that there was no 
funny woman I was so angry about, I really. Mm. And uh, when, when I was, I made a classic theater academy, uh, but I, uh, it was obvious that I have a comic talent. So in the school, I studied male roles because the, for a young woman, for a young woman, there's nothing in theater that it's really funny. Mm. They, the young women are always very in love and very poetic, and they die in the half of the show. Their bed, and then yeah. Um, and so after the school, I was for one year actress, and I get more and more angry because I felt I cannot play what I really want, what I feel. So yeah. all all the roles. I see it. They, the young women say things that I never will say. So it was after one year I decided I, I will try to, to become a clown. And for three years, I, I've gone in Italy, in Milano. For three years, I really tried to become a clown. And after three years, uh, just um, after um, it was, it was very. It was dangerous. It was very near to 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 this desperation, desperation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then uh, I tried with uh, this company. I tried with another one. I tried with another couple. And and then as as a last try, I think okay, I make a solo. And my my boyfriend makes the direction. We try. And if this not work, then I finish. And in three weeks and a half, we, we invented the uh, Jane, the Brave Jane, my first show. That I always do this one. And I think that the three years goes in this. And I was really, I, uh, my desire was existential to invent a woman clown. What do you mean by that? That I couldn't because uh, one uh, when I was so in, in problem they say why you don't make a man a little very nervous man because mm -hmm. the, it was obvious that I have talent but it was very difficult to find a character and I said no I I don't I I, I want I want to be a woman on stage uh, and then it, it was very interesting because the 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 um, basic body, this round body, I found, uh, we made uh, Aristophanes in Milanus, uh, the Greek author, Aristophanes, the Niter. And there is, it's a story about Tyran. Mm -hmm. And there are two slaves very treated badly by everybody. And the two slaves helped a man to destroy the Tyran and the, he becomes the new Tyran and then uh, beats the slaves again. And the director was Mario Gonzalez from Teatro Sole. His idea was to make from one of the two slaves a woman. And the woman is really the, the most under. <laughs> she, and I was so wrong because pregnant by everybody. So yeah. every, every mask that the Tiran was working with, sh with shoulders like this, he was very exaggerated physically. And then uh, this slave, we, we played in Milano and it was really a big surprise for everybody. I was, it was a little role, but it was the, the discovering from everybody, for, for the, the, the press, for the theater, for me, that yeah. it worked. And, uh, and this is, you, you have to, you, you, you can think about, think about, but it's on playing that you feel, yeah. wow, that's it. And in, in this production, I felt, oh, here is my clown. Mm. And then it, it's uh, go on one more year that to find the, the story for doing this. And now this character is, since nine shows, it's always the same character. Huh? But uh, it, it's, uh, it really, it's, uh, it's a, a, a big um, a curve I have to do in this uh, man role, in a role written for a man, but played by a woman. Because when it was written for a woman, then really I, I probably I have to cook soup and I have to cry. <laughs> so um, mm. right, my, my English is a little bit horrible, but I hope you understand me. No, it's brilliant. It's very good. Hello. 
Really, it's not. But uh, well, we, uh, we know you're explaining some complex things and extremely clearly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so that that journey through those nine shows. Tell us a little bit about that journey. Like, how has the character changed, evolved? What have you? What new things have you discovered during that show? Or is it always just finding another way to to sort of? I just think that the important thing is to find a good story, who's really a big story. Mm. And when when I see a lot of, of women clowns, the story is always how to find a man. Mm. And this is. A lift. This is very important in the life. I don't think, but it's it's not. I, I think you need a world story. You have to when you begin. Uh, uh, you, um, I think uh, also to, you have, you you have to feel the society, the story, what happens in the world, what is the problem. So that this has it has it's had to to do something with where you're living. With this your society. If not, I think it's after ten minutes. It's boring when it's when it's just only funny. Mm. But uh, you need a drama, and you need a big drama. Uh, so tell us about Gaudi, Ga uh, Gaia, Gaia, Gaia Gaudi. Yeah. yeah, that is the last show, and uh, we make in four with uh, this my son, my daughter, and my my daughter-in-law. I was going to ask who they are. I, I didn't yeah. know. But there are not clowns. There are musicians, dancers, and performers. And uh, we want it. It's it's about the the change of generation, mm. all the conflicts between young and and old. And also here, the the, the performance is beginning. I in the coffin. I'm dead. The Hannah, my character. That, but then I come out. The behind it's the soul, and the soul has not understand that she is dead. So she is this this body, and then but it's a story, and then the story is that I have to go, but I don't want to go. And the young people push me, and then uh, I go. The the coffin becomes like the door in the other world, and then the three are the are this, this uh, it's like a death birds because in in the in a very uh, 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 various mythology, the deaths are birds because mm -hmm. they're all our angel are birds. It is be between earth and and heaven. And yeah. so I go in this. I, I go to this death world, and at the end, I disappear in in a, in a, a sweet case. And uh, in in the kinder wagon. Of my daughter, the light goes on, and on the sweet case, the light goes on. So it's it's a story about uh, um, birth and death, birth and death, and about the the, the old people has to go. One point, our our, our uh, task is go, <laughs> leave. Yeah. yeah. And and the and is it was it very interesting working with with your family on that? Presumably, it it became very personal. For you guys it's not easy at all <laughs> yeah uh, but uh, for the fact that the, the 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 theme of the show was really the conflict between this generation so every conflict we have it was also interesting that it was not funny and not uh, joyful to have it but it was very interesting so uh, for, for the show um now it was it the difficulty is also but we are so different we are really so also as a profession, I'm a clown. There are actor, musician, dancer. There are uh, they make site-specific theater, very shamanistic theater, uh, and so it was. What what do we do together? Yeah. But then we um, we have a very nice director. It's um, Michel Vogel from Family Flutes. Oh, very good. And. Um, we really, uh, we, we, so everybody really wanted it, and, and we was we resisted to a lot of very difficult crises and moments. We also have a coach to help, mm. and then sometimes it seems it's not possible, and then we go through. And now it's it's uh, it's. Um, 
I think it's a good show because also the I think a good show is when when on the show you see thing you see the show, but then you feel there is much more than this show. It's much more over and under, and I, I think all all the the conflicts and all the the friction and um, desperation you you feel it in the show. It goes in. It's not that that you read it, but yeah. it's. Uh, I think theater is more than what you see. It's it's a resonance hall. Mm, wow. That's yeah. So, when did you launch that show? How how long has it been out? It, it's in eighteen. Okay, and you managed to tour it and show it a few for a couple of years. Then before, uh, COVID. yeah. Now for COVID, it's the the the, the most of uh, cancelled. But uh, it's it's we do it in in ten days. We do no. Yes. One week we can go on tour. Huh. We hope. Cool. Yeah. Where are you going? Tell us where you're going. Yeah, that's Switzerland and Germany at this moment. Okay, so we have to come to you in Switzerland or Germany. You invite me to Bogota or to uh, Oregon? No, yeah. no we, are, we are traveler. We, we travel. I'd love to. Yeah. I'd love to. I'd love to see that. And it made me think about the the way that during lockdown we were the fa family was under this pressure to uh, and stress of being together all the time for hours and hours and days and days. And it was when you were talking about this creative process with-, with uh, I, I have to say, my, my, my children, they live in Marsilia and they are out of my house since, uh, since si 16 and 12 years. It, it hasn't been possible if they live at home. No. They're uh, out and they make their profession, they make their things, and it was really a meeting yeah. to meet. Uh, but uh, they uh, live in France. Uh, mm. No, I think if also when they have been 20 years, it's impossible. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course. Um, so, guys, we, we have about 15 minutes left, so please put your questions into the comments and so that uh, I can put them to Gadi and we can. We can chat. If there's anything that's like, you know, you're curious about, um, then this is your chance to to ask Gadi. Um, so while we wait for any more questions to come through, I would love to know about, if you're willing to talk about it, your your new show that you're working on now, or is it too much de in a delicate state to be able to say anything? I can say, because the last shows, always I, my dream was, Empty stage, nothing mm. on stage. Nice, interesting. Yeah. I always also the prompter. I begin like this: only this, this roof, and I come out on stage. Sir. Yeah. And now I really, I, I would like empty, empty, completely empty. No, no toy. Only fantasy, only playing. Yeah. Oh wow. That's okay. I think, and now I, I have. So much experience and so much uh, four thousand shows in my life. So it, it's the moment to do. And if if I don't reach to do it, okay, I don't need no more show. I, I'm free now, no. Mm. Yeah. But I I I would really like to because theater is fantasy, no? Is imagination? Is uh, is I, I'm. I'm very uh, more and more. I'm touched. What is theater? Not because you 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 on stage. You make fake emotions. You do. I I, I do. I am this and this and this. And people follow you. And we go in this collective fantasy. We go through big emotions. We make like a travel together. And then uh, show is finished, and people feel feel much better than they feel when they come in. <laughs> They laughed a lot. They tried. They cried. They and it's it's magic. What is that? More and more, I think. What what a nice invention we have done. Mm, mm. Oh, okay. Here's a question. Um, Brian says, "Is it possible to completely improvise a live show and just respond to the occasion?" 
there are people they do this uh i i'm not able to do that i i need i i i need but i i need stuff mm. i think i i i i'm prepare myself with big stories with a lot of stories and i offer this to the public but uh perhaps to improvise a live show only but that, that is be great but what i see sometimes is on street there are improviser yeah but um, it it's nice but uh, it's 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 funny and you admire the uh, the invention but i think it's it's never go really deep mm. on humanity uh essence tell yeah. you but what i see that you 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 stay more at the sup, sup, uh, superficial and and what what i like is really to go to grab under and under and under that yeah. And this, I, for me, I, you have to prepare. You have to really research. You have to. Uh, try. I work more or less one year for one show. Yeah. So. Um, and do you? Um, so. Oh, that that was that was uh, catfish. That's not a question. Um, I'm I'm thinking. You know that when you are rehearsing you must improvise and to be a fly on the wall and to be able to see those improvisations, I'm sure that there is something very profound about that as well. Like that these moments of discovering something new for the first time in the moment when you actually discover it. So maybe there's potential. I I'm wondering if you do improvise at all in your shows, are there moments where you're, uh, you have space to interact with the audience or to improvise something new i think today it's it's a wrong uh, understanding what uh, what means the word improvising that it, it was in the in the comedy lab that there was the improvisazione but every actor has his mask has his theme has his lattices and then he improvises but it's not with nothing they are very prepared they have a lot of tools of skills of that and they are uh, it, it, they, it, it's they have like a, a, a fundus or they have a, a buffet of things and then they improvise with this it's not nothing it's not just improvise something and you're not not prepared yeah. i think the improvising is you have your your uh, you're prepared and then you can play with this yeah so things are probably different every time you do them because you're 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 responding to little impulses and things in the space that are different, but the basic structure is the same. Yeah, and I think improvising it's a, it's a technique also to find scenes, to find things, but we are not. I think we are not so interesting, naturally interesting. So we have to to found to read to to uh, think about, to invent, uh, and then you can improvise, but not just because when, when I see this kind of improvisation, it's always a little bit the same, no? Yeah. It's a little shy, it's a little this, a little that. And it's funny to do it, but it's not, it's not enough for a show. Mm. That's my opinion. Oh, I, I understand, yeah. I'm very um, intrigued about this new idea then of coming out with uh, with without objects without uh, a physical world i mean you'll come out with a script or with a with with an, an idea of what you're doing but to see you um because your worlds are always so dense with objects you're yeah. very, very complete so it's going to be going in an opposite direction it's going to be very interesting yeah because, because but, uh, I have always also this scene of in, in for, for perhaps not in the prompter, but now in the Gaia Gaudi, um, uh, there's the moment where is the the death Hannah in in the coffin, and people looks to them. So I think ah they they do theater, they they are public, and then she does nothing, and she, it's boring. So I I 
I explain her how to make theater and then I, I invent scenes. And that is for me very easy in this moment to mm. invent. And this kind of, of invention, yeah. uh, I, I would make bigger. In actually in the prompter, there is a great scene where you reenact like a party. Um, it's like ah, an and they start vomiting and yeah. uh <laughs> it's brilliant so yeah. good and it's, it's all the kind i would like to do more yeah that, no that, that. i have the imagination i see the three actors and they are drinking drinking and then vomiting and then, so this is uh, uh this is poor theater no sure uh, yeah I mean, you might call it mime. So on, on, on one hand, it's some type of uh, corporeal mime skills integrated with clown and storytelling. Yeah, yeah, I am a little bit, it, it's not really the classic pantomime. That is, I think that is a, a so formalized technique and copy technique that is uh, really, I, I it, for me, it, it's no more living. It's uh, yeah. Uh, that is not what, but mime means with the body. It's not with the, with, with speaking. And pantomime is only mime. So, so it's, but, yeah. but historically the word is occupied by, by a technique I don't like or not. No, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, the technique is very good. It was only, there was too much, too, too much people, they copy the same technique. And so you see it and see it and see it, the same thing. And then it's, when you, when you see the thing, you, you just know that it's boring. Yeah. When, when the audience uh, is waiting for a gag, you cannot do it. Yeah. Because it's boring. Yeah. So you have to surprise all times. Um, what, who, are your, who are your favorite clowns working now who uh, inspire you or you think are doing good work? That's too <laughs> <different. laughs> Are there a few? No, that's a, I, I think that is um, it's too concrete. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we're real, really a very little community. Yeah. So. Uh, yes. Um, it's just amazing to me, like the, the as I do these conversations, how um, but I discover. Uh, little corners of the of the world of clowning that I didn't know exist and for example a few weeks ago I wrote I, I suddenly realized where where are the young clowns you know where uh, all the people I'm talking to are in their 60s and 70s <laughs> where are the where are the people in their 20s and 30s? I think for them it's very difficult to, to get in the market because when I do a workshop it's full in in, in, in one day it's full uh, the, there's a big interest of young people from clown. But yeah. It's a very hard moment to to get a, a position in the market. So I, I was more more. Uh, uh, it was easier in the in the eighties. There was just opening everywhere, theater festivals in every place. And so when when I have my first show, I have a lot of work, and so I can do a little theater with and. Then the television is coming, and so it was. It was a good moment, yeah. and also in the society, there was that was a, a, a spirit. We can change the world; it can become better. Now it's probably we don't survive as humanity. We will destroy us. It's 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 another real another moment. Yeah. So, um, but but I think cool. there's a lot of interest in the young people, and I I I, I feel it it will come. They are there, they are there, but they have to come out. And what is, you know, it's difficult to know what are their ways of learning because it used to be that people would learn um, clowning from being on the street or, you know, just being out there and performing and, and failing a lot. And now it seems to me that people don't do that so much that, and that people just go and take workshops and the clown schools and the clown workshops are yeah. where the young people go and I feel like they kind of, maybe they get a little stuck in those workshops and it's hard to make the step out into making yeah I, I, I'm agree but also I have made no clown school uh, I, I see that there are a lot of people that have a good technique but 
the, the problem is to have a good story, to have yeah. really good ideas, what you want to present on stage. And yeah. for, for this, you have, uh, uh, I think, go really deep. Where are the problems? Where are the fears? Where are the frustration in you and in the world? And these are the stories. And I think when, when you, when you, uh, it, it, the, the, the problem is not the technique. Yeah. The technique you, it's sure, you have to learn some techniques, like for everything. There's some skills you, you learn. But this is, uh, the, the, what I see is how, how to really invent, how, how you, you have idea that you can make scenes. Mm. That, it's a pity, but because on the website I have a description uh, how I create the tailor with all the protocols, all the films, all this, the the drawings. The but it's in German <laughs> because uh, uh, I just when 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 I was a young artist and I wanted to invent me a, a clown show, I read all the uh, biography of, of big clowns, Chaplin, Rock, and so for learning how they work, but I don't describe not the moment how they work. And so I, I described how I invented the tailor and I put all the materials. You, you can go on back, I can write it after. Uh, yeah. It's also on my website. And you, feel, you see the, the photo of the first scenes and I'm really, Oh, it's horrible because um, I, 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 I'm ashamed. <laughs> it's, you begin with not big talent. And this I wanted that, that you begin by little path by path and at the end you have to show. But at the beginning, it, uh, it's uh, not a great thing. Yeah. I mean, I think what, what people are lacking is sometimes and exactly that, like an understanding of how to create from the beginning of something and really see it through to the end of something like what is that journey it's an yeah. artist's journey yeah and we have to think of ourselves not just as clowns that go out and entertain but we are artists right crafting beautiful pieces of work of art out of our clown you know that our clown is our medium yeah uh, Gadi, I put the I put your website on the comments. Is that the one you were talking about? Just GadiHutter.com, or is it different? A different. GadiHutter.com, and there you see uh, this workbook where you can also go in to see the first drawings, the first writings, the first of uh, the first idea. Mm. Uh, perhaps you and all the, the videos of the first rehearsal, and uh, you see you. It's really. In, That's an amazing resource. I, so if somebody out there who speaks, who's bilingual and is interested in clowning, wants to do a project and translate everything on that site into English, that would be an amazing service to... Yeah, do. but I, I put all the protocols because if, for the reason that I don't speak, I write very well when we were at rehearsal or women, I write all. It, mm. it, it helps me to work, to... to to remember, but also to understand. And so there is all on, and you, uh, it's, it's, it's big material. And yeah. but somebody, you can see that when an idea is born, when she becomes bigger, when she falls out, when another, so you can really follow. But hmm. And what you said earlier about working with, having somebody else to bounce ideas, uh, share ideas with, I think is so important for people to remember as well, that even though we appear often solo on our own, it seems as though we're working on our own, but it's a collaborative effort, right? It takes all these yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the most important is really that you have a good director, that you create the show, you're the actor you create from inside and he creates from outside. Yeah. And it's, it's for clown, I think because it's not, it, it becomes so introverse. And clown is extroverse, it goes out. And when, when you work alone, you're, you're feeling inside and you have to show it to somebody. So, yeah. so I think it's, for me, it's very important to, to find, it must not, it has not to be a big director or the famous director. You can also exchange that one clown 
exchange with the other, but you have somebody who is outside and you see, he sees much things that you cannot see from inside. Mm. And I'm, I'm also director. These are we, we create together. Do you do you direct shows and other people's shows? No, no, no. no, no. I director for my own shows. So yeah. It's not that the director says has says me how to do. So we invent together. Yeah. Huh. Co-creation. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Kat, uh, Catherine Steller, who um, uh, is I, I've been working with lately, says actually I can do the translation. I think so. Do you know Catherine Gardi? No, I know so Catherine. Maybe I should put you guys in touch and uh, she yeah. could do, do some translation for you. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, uh. And yeah. if she's uh, German speaking? Yes. Uh. She is. Sure. I'll, um, if, you're, if, you're, if you're serious about that, Catherine, I'll, I'll put you in touch with Gadi. We can, yeah. we can share detail, uh, email addresses and yeah. that would be very awesome. Well, I'd love if something as like concrete as that came out of our conversation today, like, you know, that connecting you guys and being able to create a, an amazing resource for people. Because what you described sounds incredible, you know, for be able to people to see what a, your whole process actually looks like. And maybe Catherine, while you're about it, you can translate that um, that book that Gadi just showed us. <laughs> okay. that be, yeah. No, but, but it's interesting because there is the one of the biggest error is that clown comes from Latin colonus. That's not true. Clown is much older and it's a Scandinavian original, a Scandinavian word, and it means clump, lump, gap, plat, bulge, come bump. Buckle, bulge, lump, yeah. chunk. Uh, yeah. it, 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 it's not colonus. And also, the diff the, the, there is no difference between Buffon and Clown. That is a didactic difference but that Lecoq made, but it, historical is the same thing. Also, Buffon is from Italy and Clown from England, but it's the same uh, Interesting. map. I mean, I think that, that there's some... Um... I was thinking, I mean, I have an idea about that, that, that there's a difference in my head, maybe because I've heard it from Lecoq and, and Gaulier and people. But um, when I when I saw, when I see you, I think that there's Buffon sort of mixed with clown because of the grotesque shape. But, it, but clown and Buffon, they are complementary. They are bad and life. They are good and bad. They are clever and stupid. They are aggressor and victim. There are always both. That's not Buffon is dark and clown is uh, right. That is uh, that is historical really wrong. Mm. That's really yeah. good to know. Really good insight. So uh, we need to have that book. We need to get yes. But this is difficult to turn because it's scientific. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, but perhaps she can begin with, with my description of how to create the show on, on, on the website. I don't know. Yeah. This also, if you find somebody, I, I think that this will be a, a little bestseller in the clown community. Oh, my goodness. Because there's so few, very few books out there. Because I really, that don't exist. It's, it's the first time. And, and I really, I search all what is written about clown. I think I, I, I but it's... Uh, because it's popular art, it's not enough interesting for the big science to study it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to wrap it up, Gadi. I just wanna say thank you again so much for being here and for this okay. great conversation. Really, really enjoyable and educational. I, I don't know, my English is, it's, I'm, sometimes I'm confused because what I would say is so complicated, my English is so simple, so, uh, Sometimes it probably can a little bit confused. Well, no, I understood everything perfectly and uh, I think everyone did. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, thank you. Okay. I'm going to say goodbye to you and then just do a little closing with everyone. But um, it's been wonderful meeting you again and hopefully we'll get the opportunity to, to meet again very soon. 
and I'd love to see your work. So maybe we'll get you over here to Oregon. Okay. I can send you the links of all show if you want. Yeah. Okay. Please. Yes. Okay. Okay. Bye, Gadi. Bye. Thank you so much. Okay. Wow. Wasn't that amazing? Um, so folks, please subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button to, to support uh, the work I'm doing here with Clown Spirit. Also, I'm be I've been doing clown reaction videos on YouTube. I don't know if you've seen that. Head over to my YouTube site and check out the clown reaction videos. There's all kinds of different stuff there. And, and um, if you have a, an idea for a video, a clown act that you'd like me to do a reaction to, just send me the link, whether it's you doing something or somebody else doing something. If it's available on YouTube, I can do a reaction video to it and share it around. So thank you so much for being here again for another week of Clownversation. Um, over the next few weeks, I've got some very cool people. Um, I have got Shannon Colcutt, who is a wonderful clown who has worked with Cirque du Soleil. John Davison, who's written a bunch of books about clowning. Um, Naomi Schaefer from Clowns Without Borders. There's, there's an amazing lineup of people coming over the next month or two. So stick around. We'll be here every week doing conversations. And so I'll see you again very soon. Until then, bye for now. <laughs>